Okay, that's weird. Whoa! Your camera's upside down. We're walking on the ceiling! It's still upside down. What the hell? Okay, there we go. Now it's... Should we clap and cheer again? No, it's it's still going. You should turn the computer monitor upside down. Yeah, it was, um... <laughs> I don't know, it was just, I guess, when it fell down, it... The... The stuff got messed up. Alright. Will you look, look through that yeah. and make sure yeah. that I'm here? Mm -hmm. Charlotte, will you look behind this one? Make sure I'm here. This is a new phone. I haven't figured out how to work it yet. <laughs> <laughs> it is upside down. I'll fix it, but in my like. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. <laughs> Cut it off. That's alright. Well, I'll fix it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, people and persons. Beings of all ages, welcome to Writing Nights Press. Woo! Yeah. We have a quite a full event for you all tonight, including a feature by Dion D. Hunter. But first, our first of two sword fights. For the uninitiated, picture a poetry slam mixed with a rap battle, mixed with a comedy act, mixed with a storytelling set, mixed with a UFC fight, mixed with a WWE show, and you'll get the idea. Call it ultimate writing or mixed literary arts. What you're about to see is a head-to-head -head battle of wits and words with a bit of trash talk thrown in. We take two fighters, put them in a three-round competition. Round one. Two minutes each. Round two, three minutes each. And round three, four minutes each. Fighters can squeeze as many pieces into the round they want. Example, if you can squeeze 80 haiku into two minutes, go for it. However, there is no grace period. When time is up, fighters must stop or they will be disqualified. <laughs> when you hear a knocking sound, that's 10 seconds to go in the round. That's for the fighters. The rounds are judged on a 10-point must system, just like in boxing UFC. The winner gets 10 points. The loser of the round gets 9 or less. Judges are asked to judge based on six main qualities. Clarity of speech, efficient use of time and passion, word choice, impact, and originality. The seventh quality the judge should apply to themselves is consistency. They judge one fighter on a certain quality, they should use the same rubric with the other fighters. While hmm. oh, yeah, sorry. Lost my place. While the sword fight programs ask fighters to portray characters, which you will be excited about later, all scores are legitimate and contribute to the sword fight's persistent and ever progressing storyline. Before we begin, I would like to bring your attention to the Writing Knights social media. Yay! Facebook. Facebook! Twitter! Twitter! Instagram! Instagram! Yeah! Damn! Yeah. <laughs> Instagram! Instagram! <laughs> and we also have a Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash writing nights. So if you're like, holy shit, I love writing nights, I want to support them, then support them. Um, Money! Because we like to pay our performers, so yeah. supporting us on Patreon and buying shirts and Stuff like that helps us do that. Um, I'm going to point out the judges. Judge number one, Mr. Carl. Buy houses from him. <laughs> Judge number two, Miss Eva. Hello. <laughs> she helps to run a uh, poetry open mic every week over at Monroe Community Center. And judge number three, Charlotte. <laughs> Charlotte loves garlic. <laughs> <laughs> Judge 1.5, Daria, because Carl might have to leave. Woo! So, woo! Yeah! Daria, what's your record? 2-0. Uh, 2-0? Woo! Right. So, uh, we're just waiting for someone else to get there? Yeah. Possibly. Wait, no. Francesca? Oh, yeah. wait, you gotta win one first. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's it's Skylark that's got to want to know. That's the one I gotta walk out, look out for. Right. So uh, we would usually flip a coin, but I'm gonna hold a number behind my back. It is going to be either one or two. Twenty-five. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, so, all right. So we had someone who had to unfortunately back out this this morning. Get right up here first. What's that? Get right up there first. Okay. So we've got we've got an opening to face one of our sword fighters tonight. Is anyone interested in taking that opening? <laughs> I guess not. Well, in the absence of anyone else. Okay. All right. So, so. However, I should say first that because I recruited all of the judges and they're my friends, if you have a problem with me competing this evening, get your own butt up here. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm marking her down for making me feel garlic. <laughs> so, in addition to Skylark, let's bring up our other. Our other sword fight competitor, Woo. Dion. Woo. In this corner, bringing old school sultry vibes to wonderful nights, former member of Writing Nights, Meat Grinder, and Lake Effects NPS team, the poetess Red. Woo. In this corner, Upcycling and crocheting in haters' directions while feeding hungry people every Sunday and committing progressive Christian heresy, Skylar Bruce. <laughs> now we would normally flip a coin, but I don't have a coin, so I don't feel like grabbing one from the audience. So I'm going to hold either one or two behind my back. And... I'm going to ask Red to guess, am I holding one or two behind my back? Two. All right, you get the choice. Do you want to go first or second? Second. All right. Are you ready? Yes, I am. All right. Do you have your timepiece? My timepiece is somewhere over here. There it is. No, that's my timepiece. No, it's yours. <laughs> that's my timepiece. You got two for the first one? <laughs> I'm going to adjust it. Right now, I'm, I was trying to have this on the people. Sorry, Facebook Live people. What's the definition of insanity? You. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to adjust okay, this. Don't do it too far back. I'm not that tall. I'm going to adjust it again. Okay. Okay. All right. I read what state do you live in now? I'm in North Carolina. Oh my goodness. You just escaped from a hurricane, didn't you? I did. Well, unfortunately, you're in for round two because I'm Hurricane yeah. Skylar. Uh, Woo! Okay. Yeah. Right. Set up. <laughs> okay, honey. Oh, oh, but she's full of a lot of wind. Oh, oh my god. Oh, Damn. Oh. Unfortunately oh. for you, I'm a lot more like Florence because I'm a lot of water, too. Oh, damn. <laughs> All right, that's not going to work. Um, I'll fix it in a second. Okay, I'm going to count down from five to zero. When I point at you, you may start. Five, four, three, two, one, go. He wanted to live surrounded by beauty. He didn't find it in the mirror. He didn't find it in disappearing family. He didn't find it in health. Though malignants found him and tried to beat him down. Tumors winched his legs together. They couldn't gloom his toothless smile under a ball cap, declaring him a union man. They couldn't stop his gnarled hands from outfitting his electric wheelchair with something new each week. Harold rumbled into the community meal in the park. Barbie dolls in shiny dresses and bikinis hung from the corners of his homemade umbrella. Harold, are these your girlfriends? Nope, they're my guardian angels. Harold beamed. Too bad Mattel didn't make a Robin Hood Barbie, a vigilante to pillage their ample coffers for Harold's hospital bills. A small, senior discount apartment passed for his home. If he were home from the hospital, Harold never missed the Sunday meal in the park. 
Barbie dolls, Christmas lights, and streamers adorned his chair and attachments. Denim coveralls masked his depleted skin and over-medicated body. Guardian Barbie, I wish Harold may, I wish Harold might have no pain at all tonight. We cooked lunches to soft, barely chewy perfection. Harold was hardly the only guest with dental issues. Wheelchairs go first. Come on, man. Move back. Harold would need extra time with ill-fitting dentures before the hot meal ran cold. Then came September. And Harold did it. His apartment building neighbor said Harold had eaten his last supper. Hang a Barbie from your umbrella, call it an angel, and remember to let the wheelchair people in first.
Black lives matter. Black lives matter. You attempt to control your emotions, but the more they chant, the more you lose control, and finally it's just too much. You scream, don't you know that all lives matter? Blue lives, they matter. Shocked by your outburst, the crowd quiets until one voice proclaims that throughout history, black lives have been valued far less than others. We've been treated as lives, livestock. Children spit on as they entered newly desegregated schools. Billie Holiday explained that strange fruit blossomed and hung from trees. Rodney King video beaten in the streets. Two resumes exactly the same except for African American name. Only one will be called. But you dare to exclaim that all lives matter? My question is to who? Police at the end of their shift remove their uniforms. Blacks, however, cannot remove their color, although many have tried poisoning themselves with bleach. But as Beyonce says, we wake up like this, but we also fall asleep like this, desperate to assimilate. But preconceived notions cover us from head to toe like our entire bodies have been dusted for fingerprints. Our sons fit the description of what we think of as dangerous, tall and dark skinned. But we've taught them, if stopped, to keep their hands on the wheel and to always say yes and no sir. But history has proven that even this is sometimes not enough. 1984, my 18 year old uncle stopped for a traffic violation, taken in alive, but returned to us in pine. The story of so many black lives that did not matter. Can't you understand that the only difference between me and you is the color of our skin? You see, if I scrub and scrub, skin does peel. Tendons come on display. Can't you see we're all the same? I scrub and scrub as I pray. Please don't kill our sons. I scrub and scrub down to the glistening white bone. I scrub until I hear my ancestors scream, black lives do matter. I pray, Mr. Officer, next time you stop a young black man that this is a description of what you think of as dangerous, please treat him with the same respect you would afford your own son. Because this young man might be my child, and I want him to come home alone, come home safe and sound. And I did try. I scrub and scrub, but the black, it won't come off. Reality rushes over you. The haze that cover your eyes clears, and turn it around those statements over and over in your mind. But as you begin to contemplate out of the crowd, your old friend, unconscious bias, reaches out and taps you on the shoulder, saying, all lives do matter. It's not your fault that some matter more than others. Bring up Skylark. Five, four, three, two, one, go. None of these people are the same. Not one of last month's enthused horde came back today. So they couldn't have been that passionate. They flamed up for a moment. But there was nothing ongoing, a seedling that blew away at the first wind. Even the stray cat's poop by my back door takes longer to wash away in the rain. None of these April poetry fans have returned in May. They're reminding me of pale people who think maybe they should try to be white allies only during Black History Month. Like neurotypical people who snub autistic kids and adults until they see a blue puzzle piece. Like men who spout feminism until it means, shut up, women are talking. Like cisgender people who gladly support handsome trans men and stunningly gorgeous trans women, but be a genderqueer person who doesn't fit shiny box A or shiny box B, and they are squicked out as though the struggle for equality is about the comfort of the comfortable. So come back to writing rights events, or don't come. Just don't half-ass dismantling the system. There is no kinda sorta when you're examining your privilege. There is no sometimes when death is on the line. There is no I don't feel into it when you have the power to preserve life. There just isn't. You don't toss a few marshmallows to a drowning person. You don't rip a coat off a shivering person and blame them for the hypothermia they fear. 
You don't tell someone starving that they are hungry in the wrong month. You don't do any of those things. You figure out how to leverage your privilege into solutions rather than complacency. You never arrive, but you always keep going and you keep coming back because it's bigger than you or me. None of these people are the same, nor should they be, and nor should we be. We cannot usher in change when we won't let it in the door. Mm. So, how do you feel so far, everyone? Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Woo! So, how do you feel so far? I'm feeling like a uh, Roddy, 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 Roddy Piper's uh, cousin. Um, <laughs> Roddy Red. Right, Roddy Red, yes. Ready, Roddy, Roddy Piper? Yes. All right. All right. This is our last round. So, since Red chose the number first, Skylar can choose a number now. One or two. Okay, pick. One. That was two. So, Red, you get the choice. First or second? I'll go first. All right. Welcome, Red, back up. Woo! This is the four minute round. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Life as we know it will end, possibly in the blink of an eye. And in that moment, you won't think about how many hours overtime you worked, or what day the car notice due, or who did who during the last installment of the real un unreal housewives basketball hip to the hot wives of whatever city that comes to mind. I believe in that last moment, we review all that we've lost, found, and discarded. We wish we had hugged more and argued less. Stop to watch and wonder at the natural beauty of the sunsets and moon rises. And maybe we wonder, have we prepared our loved ones for this day that we all knew would come? What if that moment of your last breath was now? Who would miss you? Who would you miss? Have you made a positive impact on the world? Do you think you'll be remembered for your red bottom heels, how clean your luxury car was kept? Or will you actually leave something that you can't that can't be erased, rusted through, or repossessed? How many smiles have you given or caused? How much encouragement have you poured out onto others? How many lives have you touched in a positive way? What if you took your very last breath right now? Would it matter? Mm. There are three things in life that we cannot escape. Death, taxes, and those doggone commercials. Mm. <laughs> and to me, commercials are the worst of the three. You see, they go on and on talking about toys that shouldn't even be called toys because they're just so high tech. And then they go on to expensive ellipses that supposedly smooth out skin, and then they move on to undergarments that they claim will pull us in in an effort to give us back those figures from way back when. But wait! There's more. <laughs> How about our kids go outside and play? That's free. How about we drink more water to moisturize our skin? How about we walk past the fast food restaurants on our way to do a sit-up or two, or maybe even three? And yeah, by the way, that doesn't include me. But you know what we always say. Ain't nobody got time for that. We're too busy out here trying to charge up the next big thing. Not worried about that interest. Hell, they're going to let us pay it till we die. And then they're going to roll it over to the next generation. The same generation we've been teaching to shop at Nordstrom's, not Macy's. And hell no, nah, not TJ Maxx. Not even realizing that it's all the same stuff just hanging on different racks. All made by hardworking yet underpaid Asians and Mexicans. Did you know that in Bangladesh, a factory caught on fire and they locked the workers in, screaming that quota must still be made even though they knew people were dying in other parts of the building? But what can you and I as a people really say? They were probably just getting ready for our Christmas season. You know, the time of the year when the floors must be covered with toys or it's not thought to be a success. How in the world did we forget that Christ only received three gifts? And what makes us think that our kids deserve more than this? 
How about if commercials went on and on about giving out quality time as a gift? How about volunteering on a regular basis? How about taking the time to look in a stranger's eye and saying, no matter what it is you're going through today, it's going to be okay. Just take a deep breath and keep on praying. But wait around for advertisers to figure out the error of their ways. I say we better not be holding our breath. You and I, that equals we, have to stand up and be the change we want to see. And it has to start today. Hear me. It has to start today. Thank you. <laughs> Bring Skylark back up. Yay, me! All right, five, four, three, two, one, go! Theo, Piglet, you were born on a factory farm. You were as classically cute as any other pink baby. You nuzzled up to your mother, tangled in the legs of your siblings. There was no room in the stall to run or jump. You caught a glimmer of sunlight, Theo, and you knew. You filled your belly with mother's milk. Hold on, sunshine, I'm coming. A human opened the stall door to give your mother her food. You wriggled through his legs and shoo, you were out. Running with the big pigs now. Hey, Rudy, you're the biggest hog I've ever seen. Where are we going? The grass and sun looked like a lot more fun than that dark truck. I don't wanna! The humans with sticks made all the pigs get on the truck. You could still see sunshine through the wall slats. Before long, the big bodies of your cousins and the sunshine made the truck hot. Hotter. Hottest. You collapsed in the corner. Cousin Rudy stood over you, letting no 500-pound hog step on you. The truck stopped, and you put your nose through the slot in the wall. A human put a water bottle up to your face, and you drank the most delicious water ever. The human went away in handcuffs. You passed out again. When you woke up, everything was dark, and Rudy was gone. They're all gone. You stood up on wobbly legs. A human walked up and grabbed you. How did you end up at the slaughterhouse this soon? You arrived 480 pounds too soon, Theo. And the human didn't know what to do. Another human handed him a thick board and pointed into the nearby ditch. But size was on your side today, Theo. And the human couldn't. He drove your cousins to their deaths for his own living, but he couldn't kill you. Your size and age, if not your species, persuaded him. He gave you water and food and sat you on the bench seat next to him in the truck. He didn't know who would give you a home, but he knew who would know. And tired though he was, he drove many extra miles to take you to the right place. Theo, in a few days, you came home. Not home to your mother, but home to your new brother Wilbur and joyful human parents. Here at the sanctuary, the sun dances with you every day, Theo. Except when it's raining and then you dance because the mud puddles are everywhere. You dance, slide and roll and eat all the veggies. You tell your story to the smiling visitors and wiggle your tail at those not sure yet. Theo, speciesism wanted you dead. Ageism and sizeism saved you. But you're safe now. Safe and protected always. May it be so for each one. Each one born on a factory farm. How many seconds do I have left? Uh, 35. Okay. <laughs> Pittsburgh, it's Cleveland. I see your three rivers, and I raise you a burning one. <laughs> <laughs> your underwear under the couch three months after I kicked you out. Fuck you. In a different way than when they came off. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's have another round of applause. Alright, judges, be filling out your
your final scores. Um, I'll be around to pick them up from you and then tabulate them. Um, in the meantime, if people want to take a bathroom break, there's a toilet in this way. Um, and I'll be back up here in a moment, in a moment to read the scores. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Oh, they've been, Gosh. Ken's been ignoring my words for a long time. You're kidding, really? <laughs> yeah, I've been performing that sort of thing for six years now. Really? Yep. I, I did like the second set, you did really well, though. Thank you. Yeah. It sounded yeah. like we were in San Francisco. <laughs> it did. Yeah. I, I, and I actually went, lived in San Francisco for about six mm -hmm. months. And, yeah. I yeah. We're Canton, Ohio. This was really nice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Canton, Ohio is a very industrial town. Mm -hmm. so this really, I really enjoyed this Thank you. Thank you. Weighing 
at 1,522 pounds and not at all happy that you keep trying to kill her, the angry cow. Woo! And in this corner, we have an anxious local teenager who eats bacon every Sunday and believes pain is the muse of poetry, Francesca Falucco. I love it, okay. <laughs> okay, so, uh, let's do, you know what, Francesca, you, you compete a lot. We don't get, we don't get the angry cow here very much. Okay, okay so, <laughs> we'll pick a number one or two, pick. One. All right, you wanna go first or second? I'll go second. All right, please welcome the angry cow. Woo! Down from five to one, when I point at you, begin your speak. Five. If I need that. I can time to. Oh, you got it? Okay, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> five, four, three, two, one, go! Animal suffering is the root of your diet. No matter how much you try to deny it, we say that we care. Well, some of us do, but most of us just look away while we chew. The thought of their bleeding isn't as fun as this double cheeseburger wrapped in a bun. So we ignore their pain, their cries, their sorrow, because we will still want to eat them tomorrow. Mm. Happy cows, are you fucking nuts? You take our babies, you spill their guts, you drink the food we create for them, and when that shit slows, you make us pregnant again. And take that baby, and the next one too, and then soon enough, we're not profitable for you. There ain't no retirement in happy cow land. You slit our throats. Call it consumer demand. Now that's fucked up, but you don't stop there. You pile on lies to hide the despair. Cows give us milk. Bitch, please, fuck you. It isn't a gift when it's stolen from you. Humanely raised, well, isn't that sweet, as you cut us apart while we hang from our feet. We need our calcium. Try chewing some greens. Leave me alone. Eat your goddamn beans. Vegetables are yucky, boo fucking who? So you take my babies, then you eat me too? You do this to us time and again, then you draw a picture of us with a big old grin? You put our slaughtered bodies on top of your plates, and you expect me to have a smile on my face? I'm the angry cow. I'm tired of your lies. I'm tired of being served up with a bucket of fries. I'm an angry cow. You would be too, if they looked at you and wanted to chew. Happy cow? You made that shit up. To ease your guilt at slicing us up. Hello. Oh. You okay? Are you okay? Okay. All right. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Really? Yeah. Something I'd like to share before you start. Yeah. Okay. I'm a meme. Okay. Okay. It says a vegan, a Bitcoin trader, and someone who didn't vote in the 2016 election. Welcome to a bar. Who killed you about first? Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A vegan. Okay. A vegan, a Bitcoin trader, and someone who didn't vote in the 2012 election. I'm sorry. 2016 election. All walk into a bar. Who tells you about it first? Oh. <laughs> All right. All right. So let's bring up Francesca. conversation, appearing as if every word hits my eardrums and splatters paint within my brain. I'm trying my hardest to make it seem like I didn't just write a few lines of poetry about the curve of your nose, 
reminds me of every slide I got stuck on as a kid because I was too big and my thighs stick to the hot surface. About the glimmer of your eyes, you begin to tear up. Reminds me of chlorine in public pools, stinging my eyes and chugging at my lungs. Or the way your arm extends as you reach for a tissue. Reminds me of every childhood moment I've forgotten. And playgrounds with cut open hands and a mouthful of mulch. And disinfected daycares and skin scratched by thunder. With hair cut by scissors and hands drenched by rain, I reel in once again and focus on yours. Drowning in teardrops, gasping for air. I hear every word you say, and the storm moves away. How many? 30 seconds. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, how do you feel, Angry Cow? Feeling still pretty angry. Still pretty angry. Yeah, yeah. bacon jokes and shit going on over there, you know? <laughs> so we're about to start round two, the three-minute round. So, Francesca, you're going to start. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is the three-minute round. Three minutes. Do you want to do one of your... Memes? Um, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't back out now, damn it. <laughs> Alright. Alright. Five, four, three, two, one, go! Is that a bad time to say this coat is a vegan? No. Okay. Alright. <laughs> you darn vegan, this is your season. You don't need a reason to commit this treason. Listen to this beat. Go eat some meat. Let me repeat. Go eat some meat. You base your life on ethics with no regrets. What is your reason during the season to commit this treason? Let me eat my four for four without being looked down upon. You're a snore. So I go eat my four for four, but I gain a little more, but I still go eat my four for four. I watched that documentary and now I feel kind of bad. Ugh, you darn vegan. Alright. Uh, two minutes? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. Rolls off your lips. Okay, I'm sorry for saying sorry, but if I say sorry for, for saying sorry so much, it kind of undoes the sorry. I really, truly am sorry. I'm sorry my initial response to when you yelled at me to stop saying sorry was, I'm sorry. I panicked and the only two words resting on my tongue were, I'm in sorry. Most of the time I'm stuck in a gray bind and I'm not sure if I've done something wrong or not. I don't know what to do. A heavy feeling grows in my stomach and I just yell out, I'm sorry. And the feeling begins to go away. At times it's ridiculous. Oh. I breathed again, I'm sorry. I promise it won't happen again. Or maybe you've dropped your paper and I apologize because you dropped it? No one knows the real reason I, why I constantly apologize. I don't even know why. Do I just think overthink everything? Maybe, is it some weird lack of self-confidence thing? I plead the fifth. Do I feel that, every, that I, since I apologize so much, when I need to apologize, it will lessen the meaning of my apology and I will no longer be taken seriously. You bet. On that note, I'm sorry. <laughs> 40 seconds. Okay. Um, being vegan is cool, but I can't do it because I have no self control. <laughs> <laughs> Bring back the angry cow. Woo! Woo! It's a three minute round. All right. Five, four, three, two, one. But bacon Go. was the mic drop. The end of having to feel. The instant end to imagining the suffering in a meal. How easy to dismiss the pain, the cries, the fear, when all we need to block it out is bacon to appear. How simplistic are our morals? How little do we care if nothing else determines who we eat and where? You watch the slaughter footage, tears falling from your head, but then you quickly smiled, but bacon 
was all you said. Mm. Meatless Mondays, for those of us who don't want animals to suffer every day. I mean, I care, but not on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, <laughs> Thursdays, the weekend. One day a week, I can do something better. I won't pay for their suffering on Monday. I'm already hating the alarm clock, the official end of my 9 to 5, the official start to my weekend that brought me back to my 9 to 5. I guess I can eat a bean burrito today, not tomorrow. That's asking too much. I can't be expected to care two days in a row. <laughs> Hold on. While only causing suffering six days a week is certainly better than seven, when did our morals have breaks, optional days? If our boss exhibited sexist attitudes, would we encourage him to stop being sexist on Thursdays? Since we know not being sexist every day would be too sudden a change for him. Are we against family separation on the weekends? Do we oppose rape on Fridays? Do we shun racism every other Tuesday? Is pedophilia intolerable the first Sunday of the month? If we deem something wrong, how can it be wrong only some of the time? Is convenience a justification for our morals? Do we really only have the willpower for 14.3% follow-through on our values? Mm. A helpless female held against her will, penetrated and now pregnant, held captive, no chance of escape. The baby grows for months and months inside her belly. The mother, ready to love her baby, despite her circumstances, delivers a baby boy. The baby, only longing for the comfort of his mother. The mother, only longing to be near her new son. The baby feels himself pulled away further and further until he can no longer see her ever again. The mother, helplessly watching, bellows and bellows for days and days in search of a baby who will never return. The son stands in a dark crate, malnourished, alone. Soon his pale flesh will sit on a plate. His skin, no longer attached, will cover your hands when they get cold. The milk his mother produced to nourish him and help him grow sits in your cup. Mm. That's the end of round two. How are you feeling, Francesca? Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> oh, wait. I just got <laughs> I'm trying to encourage you to lean into that. Right. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Francesca, you're going to pick one or two. Go. Two. All right, Keith, you choose. First or second? I'll go second. All right, Francesca, you're up. Oh, cool. Okay. Can I share a meeting before I start? Yeah, go ahead. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. This is kind of supporting you. Um, okay. <laughs> There's so few, yeah. It's a cop pulling over a guy, and he said, I'm sorry for... I pulled you over for having a vegan bumper sticker. LOL. I was just wondering where, you, where the F do you get your protein from? So. <laughs> <laughs> Every blooming thing. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one, go. Some days are like poetry. Smooth, swift, and grafts into the beat of the iambic pentameter, calms of soul, and all in between. The nights are the greatest authors. The moon shines down and lights my path. Everything seems like it's crashing down. Worst days are the worst days are poetry too. Written in dark corners of high places, yearning to be splattered on the concrete, crashing down, feeling the wind. Lost and not found ignites anxious souls in my thoughts. Race. Okay. Full throttle. Hit the bottle. I wonder if you talk about me the same way I talk about you, with anger in my voice and hate in my eyes, followed by an. I'm sorry for getting heated. I'm still not sure why he left me. The jeep catapulted in the air, flipped on impact, land, landed on its side, and that crunch still rings in my mind, although it's only two years ago. 
full throttle, the Purius caught on fire. Its passengers were unsuspecting, but thankfully there was a stranger that told him and said, I'll drive you the rest of the way. Hit the bottle and fire at will. Okay. I'll see you. I don't mean to offend, but I want to meet, I want to see you again. Let's meet around the bend. We'll make amends around, and the place our vows were made right, be right before centrifugal force flipped our world and simultaneously messed up both our lives. I'm sorry I wouldn't lay down for some crooched boy he saw me as a notch in his belt. Some game to shoot down and ride a top off. It's not that easy to skin my clothes and take a bite. It's, it's not gonna happen. This school is a funeral, a constant memorial. The congregation holds back, but if only the walls could talk, they scream what we refuse to say. What is your eulogy? <sighs> How much time do we have? A minute and a half. Oh, a minute and a half. Cool. Okay. Okay. Singing is totally part of it. Okay. Let's take it back <laughs> to the Gilded Age. Objects painted to appear as gold. Chairs, tables, boxes, the rich living atop the world, the expense of the poor man, a worthless piece of shit, disguised as gold. Welcome to my gilded age. I paint myself with gold, my smile wrapped with ribbons, a flower in my hair, keeping a line at bay. Each laugh, a cry for help, each smile, an attempt to hide my tears, to disguise what's inside. Let's paint it with gold. But what the hell, let's paint it with gold, make it shiny, blind it by its glory, just ignore our problems and pretend, hey, everything's okay, call it our gilded age. I'm sorry. It's a different one. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Alright, I got a different one stuck, but I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. Rolls off your lips like a forbidden hem, so long removed from golden cathedrals and stained glass windows and coveted confessions. Forgive me, for I have sinned. No, no, you still ten seconds. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I think it was, it was just yesterday when you took my hand and told me you'd stay for as long as you could, but the likelihood of seeing <laughs> 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 All right, so judges, be uh, finishing up your scores. Everyone, how are you how are you feeling? You're doing? Woo! Slightly less terrible. How do you feel about the angry cow? Woo! Uh, Woo! How do you feel about the angry teenagers? Woo! All right, so we're gonna. Take a small break so I can calculate the scores. Yes. I didn't go last round. Yeah. Did you? No, we didn't do last round. Oh, yeah. I'm an idiot. Thank you. I appreciate you staying. Woo! I almost, I almost screwed the cow. No. Please welcome the angry cow. But it can't be there until the hour. Thank you. I apologize. That's quite all right. I got, I got wrapped up in them. That's not a problem. Five, four. Three, two, one, go! Vegans are weird, or so I've heard. Through overblown infatuations with protein, talks of celestial powers bringing animals into existence for that very reason, man's arrogant claims of superiority. Don't be naive and ignorant, blinded by sentiment. Animals are to eat, they tell me. Well, let's include a simple computation as we examine this argument. Start with 5,000, the number of mammal species, rounded down for simplicity. Mammals aren't alone. We need to add in birds. So 10,000 species with feathers plus 5,000 hairy bastards. Now math class is just a shady memory in my distant past, but I think I can handle this one. 15,000 animals. Oh wait, we need reptiles. That's 9,000 species there. Shit, I've got to carry a one? Uh, uh, 24,000. I'm done. Fucking fish! 27,000 of them. Seven and four is 11 once more. Two twos and a one. Uh, 54,000. My math teacher would be proud, if only I could remember her name. Amphibians! <laughs> those weird motherfuckers who can't just pick a home? 7,000 species still to add. 
Four and seven, carry the one. Damn, where's my calculator? Change the five to a six. It's 61,000. Insects? You've got to be kidding me. Do they even count? Two million? At least we get those zeros. That's two million, 61,000 animal species in the world. And you eat what? Four? Cow, pig, chicken, turkey? Okay, maybe you eat duck, crab, deer, walleye, carp, salmon, trout, tuna, lobster, shrimp, rabbit, lamb. I can still count that on my fingers and toes. Maybe try turtle ones, alligator or squid. I'll even add in an extra 10 for any I might have missed. Well, let's round that up to 30. Maybe, just maybe, you've eaten 30 species. 30 out of 2,061,000. I don't need long division to tell me that's not even close to 1%. Wait, you said I was silly. You went on and on about protein. You said God gave you animals to eat. You're slacking. <laughs> so wash down your double cockroach horse burger with some organic llama milk. Dip your blue jay wings in delightful gecko sauce. Serve your orca salad with shaved donkey on the top. Skunk jerky, kangaroo sliders, guinea pig and spider stew. Animals are for eating, you sentimental fool. Beagles, bats, and beavers, baked or barbecued. Camels, cats, canaries, and a creamy casserole. Go ahead. Tantalize your taste buds. Crunch, munch, chomp, slurp, chug, gulp. Oh wait, or maybe not eating animals? Isn't that weird after all? Mm. <laughs> Blood gushes from my neck. Rib roast, chuck steak, brisket. Blood pours from my belly. Club steak, ribeye, <laughs> porterhouse. Blood spills from my ass. Sirloin, tenderloin. Rump roast, blood trickles from my legs, meatball, roast beef, pot roast, blood flows from my veins, corned beef, hamburger, filet mignon, blood spills everywhere, muscles, tendons, cartilage, blood splatters the floor, skin, eyeballs, intestines, blood drips from my heart. We go in alive, 18 months of age, joined together in one piece. But that is not the way we come out. Mm. <laughs> All right. Now that we've properly done it. <laughs> so, how are y'all feeling about the Andrew Cow? Woo! <laughs> Collect the judges' scorecards. <laughs> if you want to sign up for the open mic, <laughs> you want to hit the restroom. Um, and I'll be right back up when I've got everything calculated. Thank you. Don't go too far because you still need to have the. Oh, yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> I didn't want to be the one to move that. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yes, because oh, yeah, Angry yeah. Cow will come back up for the announcing of the... <laughs> I don't need my phone, sorry. <laughs> he just needed some moral support. <laughs> Much better this time. Much Thank better. You. Yes, you've definitely improved over last month. Thank you. I'm in a speech now, so that kind of forces me to fall on the ground. Yes. If you throw fans at judges, yes. I did deduct uh, two points for trying to hit the judge. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 the... I think it was part of the careless teenager act. I did that. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't mean to have I can understand the crowd the yeah. throwing yeah. milk at me, but kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big fan of you, I guess. <laughs> oh, nice. You should have pulled that off before the scorecard was gone. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to see the memes? Sure. <laughs> you have like a whole 
boatload of them. I made them for my dad for Christmas. It was okay. his Christmas present because I didn't have the food. So I just wasted all the I do really like the first one. What's the first one? <laughs> when you're vegan as fuck and the photographers say cheese. <laughs> So, the scores are in. The winner, with a unanimous decision of three scores of 30, 27, our winner, the Angry Cow. <laughs> Got anything you want to say to the audience and the judges? Thank you very much. It was a pleasure presenting. A pleasure looking out at you as I presented. Thanks for being here. For the applause. Sorry, I cut you off with the applause on the one round, but I knew I was pushing my button. And I didn't want to. I didn't want to get back on the for run out of time. So I don't have time for applause in that round because I knew it was putting it close. But I appreciate the thought. Thank you so awesome, much. Awesome. Hey, thank you. I should move along. <laughs> <laughs> awesome! 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 Um, Everybody sign up for the open mic. Do you guys want to sign up for the open mic at all? Feel free. Sure. Um, I'll read again. Red, are you ready to go now or do you want to have a pause? Uh, can I go now? Because I have a couple of people that have to leave. Sweet. All right. Yeah, yeah. All right. <coughs> Strawberries and whipped cream can whet the appetite, but the delicious poetry of our feature will have even the tightly laced listener longing for more. For booking information, please contact... R-E-D-D dot T-A-L-E-Z at gmail, red tails, red dot tails. She is always redefining elegance, determination, and desire. Please welcome Red. For you all for coming out on this chilly night. And for all of the uh, contestants who performed tonight, because getting up in front of you guys is hard and scary, so let's give it up for them. And I want to say a special shout out to my folks who came out from Cleveland and Akron this evening. Uh, Lee and Marshall, Laila and Brian. Marsha, <laughs> Some of my poems are going to be a little bit sensual, but uh, so I hope that's okay with you. <laughs> <laughs> you heard what we read, right? right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm going to start with mixed messages, and this is about women. Uh, we get pulled in so many directions, thus mixed messages. Women, most of us are taught by our parents to be morally unsullied in order to be worthy of love, while the world teaches us that we must be seductress in our repertoire. Of course, though, only for the right man. Don't fall into the road too easily, though, for fear of being labeled a slut. But don't resist too hard for fear of being called a prude. Remember to never forget, you are a good girl. Although all the movies seem to say that floozies have all the fun. Have you dared to explore your sexuality? Knowing what you want and asking for it are two good ways to muddy your good name. Hmm. We see lovely girls wearing thongs, angel wings affixed to shoulders, too young to pierce ears without parental consent. Music videos blare, shake it up, shake it up, bounce baby, bounce. Dollar bills stick to sweaty ass cheeks. Innocence lost. Are we all caught in a fun house with no way out? They tell us to be docile, to take what comes, live to please others, take the blame and to wear your shame. Girl, you might as well dig a grave and bury yourself. Then be reborn. Live for you. Love the skin you're in. No matter what you choose, own your decisions. Don't be bullied into playing a caricature. Choose you over everyone. Don't fall victim to mixed messages. Uh, this is called Soul Fusion. Um, unclutter your conscience.
consciousness? Lose, meaningless, I want, I need, more, more, more. Liberate your mind, your body, your soul. Today is a new day, imagined but never seen. Positive energy discharges. We are all intended to immerse ourselves in the light that surrounds us, allowing our potential to manifest into greatness, thundering through eternity, serving from a dish warmed by our passions. Instead, parched lips longing to drink discover rivers overflowing with essence, with innocence. So many who are near death stumble forward, flailing as they fall into the depths, weighed down by guilt and regret. Release, instead of suffocating in the watery grave, quench your thirst, search no more, fill yourself with purpose. Multitudes have scratched the brink of triumph, giving up before they reach their dreams. Bellies full, fight, overflowing with love of life, free from laboring hearts previously buried beneath mounds of pain while solemn faces wore empty stares. Release your anger, disappointment, lost loves. Release because service to humankind heals all wounds and the source of it all will free the darkest heart soulfully. Thank you. Mm. This is called super glue. I see you standing there tall and strong, a soldier ready for any battle. Tears. I'm surprised your essence flows so easily, but I feel safe. Those tears, they bond the pieces of my broken heart and like a child's jigsaw puzzle, a beautiful picture appears and I ask, how do you maintain your strength? You answer, hold me tighter. Your masculine scent, it fills me. I taste you. Finally, I am safe. Never again will I feel alone. And I thank you. Thank you. This is called Tigeress. It's about a woman that's looking for her soulmate physically and emotionally. Tigeress. Her skin glistens in the moonlight. Her body is sculpted by God's own two hands. Soulful eyes hide the wisdom of nine sensual lies. This exotic cat chooses her prey in a most interesting way. She starts out by analyzing his strut and then she scans his masculinity, all while taking note of how his body's chemistry stirs up her inner heat. Fair warning to all you sexy men out there, it is mating season, and in her frenzied state, this pussycat has been known to lick on her life partner like he's a sweet candy treat. And afterwards, taking all that's left to work up all her pent-up anxiety. You see, it's usually an awfully long work week full of disappointment sprinkled with a little bit of betrayal, and this kitty cat is in need of an all-natural release. Some might call it that Mr. Feelgood, while others... Others call it that magic stick. I, I call it that stuff that makes a grown-ass tigeress act right extraordinarily quick. <laughs> so snap to it. Do your job. Pull her hair and call her dirty, sexy names. All while she arches her back and throws that dang thing. It's been reported that the tigeress is looking for a man similar to that thought in, as LL Cool J. He must be truly free, bored with conventional ways of making love and not handcuffed to society's pious rules. In other words, he can't stand being handcuffed as a rule. This fine feline was crafted with real love making in mind. She will make the right man's fantasies all come true. And all she asks in return is that you pound out all her stress on your inner needs till the sound of you slap, slap, slapping laps into a rhythmic beat. But please be aware that if you fail to bring the thunder, the tigeress will size you up as you lay there drifting your sorry ass off to sleep. <laughs> Licking her lips in a, such a seductive manner. This time is different though. Unsatisfied by your prowess, she now only sees you as something good to eat. So don't attempt to tame the tigeress unless you are mean 
between the sheets. Thank you. <laughs> Our vision, this is called faithful. Our vision is oftentimes tainted by experience. Experience shades perception. Perception breeds expectations which provide fertile ground for distress to take root. Deficiencies in our armor expose a proclivity to misunderstanding. And misunderstanding, the bastard child of poor communication and conclusion jumping, expertly drives a wedge between what should have been and what is reality. Any chance of happiness tangled in a labyrinth of unimagined beginnings that dutifully wait for those that dare to step out on faith. Thank you. Mm. Now, this one is about someone who stepped out on faith and it didn't quite work out. <laughs> their rational mind and their body are telling them two totally different things. And I don't know about you, but I've been in that situation before. So, I wish that my rational mind would cease to exist as thoughts of him begin and then persist. His sensual space have knocked my pride aside. He's discovered the secret. Real, real women love a nice ass hard ride. <laughs> when he binds my physical form with silken scars, he simultaneously releases my more carnal desires. When I'm with him, my body has never been afraid to trust. However, my rational mind has never been so easily won over. When I lay with him, pesky thoughts begin to creep in like, can he love me? Will he love me? Can I ever be enough? My lover, though, totally oblivious to my inner trials, guides my warmth onto his pride, gilding the lily for that nice, hard ride. He flips me on my knees and pulls my hair. I arch my back and, oh, here they come again. Can he love me? Will he love me? Can I ever be enough? I began to scream at my rational mind, pleading, let me enjoy this time. It is so fleeting, and his kisses, his kisses taste so sweet. I just want to relax into his passion and allow him to spread these beautiful caramel thighs and explore away until he finds the luxurious sweet prize that's hidden inside. You know what? Come on over here, baby. Who the hell needs a rational mind? Thank you. Do, do I have any fellas who have birthdays in October here? Just one? Okay. Well, this is to, for all of the leaders or anybody coming up with a birthday, but it's, it's made out for the fellas, and it's called Happy Birthday. <clears throat> Your queen trembles after every kiss, each one firm yet gentle meant to let you know there's so much more left to experience. Birthdays are celebrated by millions each day, but this one, it's the only one that matters, and it's yours. Tonight, your wife plans to lay all her passion at your feet and show you exactly what it means to be king. Looking into your eyes, she says, baby, just relax and let go. Then removes each and every stitch of your clothes. Massages your shoulders with sweet scented oils and warm embraces. Sumptuous tongue kisses trace hearts all over your glistening torso. Your body tenses and she stops just long enough to say, baby, don't be, so, don't be so perplexed. Just lean back and let mama handle all the rest. She lovingly springs into action, your body taken off guard by pleasure so intense that your eyes roll back. As your goddess inches closer, closer, closer to achieving her goal, a little ditty pops into your head. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. <laughs> Lusty love. 
He wants to slide into you like a rain finger slides into a wedding band, smoothly with no hesitation, carrying promises of his undying love and know that his love will last forever. Passion, so unique, even Cupid finds himself being jealous of how well matched you are. You mailed into intellectual, metaphysical, and cellular-based ecstasy so intense, poets will attempt to describe it for centuries. As he looks into your eyes, he tries to breathe in your very essence, and the mere sight of him causes your most private parts to spasm. Lust and love are two very different things, but how beautiful a picture is painted when both are found in the same packaging. Thank you. Mm. This is called white frosting. My body is a bundle of nerves ready to explode, aching and crying out to be touched. Wanting only one thing, and baby, you know what that is. It's your damn thing. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Not on purpose, sorry. <laughs> It's your damn thing. So here I am inviting you to fulfill all your deepest fantasies. I'm a little nervous. You know, I don't do this kind of thing normally, but we've been fussing and fighting, and baby, I really need to know, do you still want me? Hmm. Well, hell yeah, you do. But do you want me as much as I want you? I'm standing here scantily clad, mesmerized by your gaze. Electricity is pulsing through every damn vein. I have a need that only you can satisfy, and I need you to touch me. Yeah, right there. Now kiss those sweet juices as they roll down my thigh. I whisper, do you want me? And even though I see the power behind your eyes, I beg, yeah, you heard me. I beg for you to release the beast you have trapped inside. Our bodies, they tangle and energies collide. And oh, how I want you deep inside. A well-lit room so that you can see me on my knees wanting you to want me. Overwhelmed by ecstasy, heights of pleasure newly reached, causing your white frosting to absolutely cover me. Do you want me? I need ask no more as I lay here totally damn satisfied by your massive storm. Thank you. tickling my bare feet, warm sun beating down on caramel shoulders, sounds of children playing, jumping, laughing, not a care in the world except for first one back winds, sweat drips down my bra, my brow, tastes salty on my lips, laughter grows louder, louder, I yell, I think I found it, a four-leaf clover, could it be? I run back fast, leaping over clouds. I feel I've already won. Then the adult calls out, game over, Dion found it. Joy rushes over me in waves. I hope this feeling never ends. The prize, who remembers? Not me and it doesn't matter. I just remember thinking of the grass tickling my toes, the sun beating down on my caramel skin. Laughter, silly laughter. Kids just being innocent kids. to a more serious note. Uh, back at, during the slave trade, more than 15% of the Africans who were caught and captured and put on ships didn't make it to the mainland uh, due to the travels uh, through the Middle Passage. And some of the um, 
they were losing so much money, the ship's owners were losing so much money, that they began to take out insurance on the human cargo. And the insurance didn't cover um, cargo that died on the ship and had to be lost at sea. So someone mm -hmm. came up with the great idea of throwing the sick and dying slaves overboard. That way they could be counted as lost at sea. And this is a poem in you know, honor of them. I methodically maneuvered seamlessly under ocean waves. That is, until the shadow of a massive creature drifted over and covered me. Blood curdling screams escaped the human cargo held in the belly of the beast, and I was hypnotized by the sounds that washed over me like monsoonal waves. I can still hear those echoes even now. My family, all I love, taken away from me. Bodies packed so tight, no room to move. Not enough to eat and even less to drink. Mother Africa, rescue me. Finally able to break free from my troubled trance, I contemplated the purpose of any entity which could cause so much misery. Bewildered, I surfaced, hoping that the sun's rays on my dorsal fin would warm the now chilled blood running through my veins. I basked in the summer heat, oblivious to my surroundings until snapped back into reality by the sight of a pale human directing whip into dark humans meet. So many times it slashed into dark humans' back. Broad, dark shoulders full of nobility crumbled underneath the lash, but simultaneously blossomed into colored palettes of white, pink, and red. At that very moment, if it was within my nature, I would have screamed, but instead I dove down deep, desperate to escape those horrid scenes. Hours passed as I soaked, trying to find and make sense of the day's escapades when suddenly dark bodies began to breach the ocean's crest. One, then another, all attached to heavy chains. Men, women, children, all ages, thin and sickly, yes, but still alive. Their grisly cries muted by the liquid filling their lungs. Unfortunately, their struggle was music to the ears of predators like me, some of whom had already begun to feast. I held back for as long as I could, but finally my animalistic nature took hold of my very core and I began to tenderize warm, dark meat between my giant teeth. Tears that I didn't even know I had began to mix and mingle with blood and sea. I, I am a creature that many think of as a mindless killing machine, but on that day after gorging, I... I lay fat and tired and disgusted with myself, with just enough energy to wonder how that ship's crew would attempt to justify their own actions. I was, and will forever be, totally disheartened by your crew's humanity. Mm. You, you want to do another one? Um, it's up to you. Good to close on. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. I really So I got a few more announcements before we do the open mic. If you want to sign up for the, the recorded open mic, get over to it now. Or if you want to not be recorded but you still want to do open mic, do that. January 19th. I'm sure you're wondering why I'm holding this three pounds of wood pencil. But uh, January 19th is As to Loot, our first sword fight tournament. Uh, there are cash prizes, and the winner gets this pencil, which they'll hopefully be able to defend at later sword fight events. Um, November 9th, is, the theme for that event is hunger, and we're having a food drive that night. So bring in a can of food, and you get a copy of the release we're going to make that night. Um, all of the food and money we get from that night will go towards the Canton Sunday Picnic to help feed homeless people downtown. Again, we are hungry looking for hungry, hungry people, homeless, hungry. Um, we are looking for features for that night. Uh, so if you oh, want a feature, if you want a sword fight, that's great. December 14th, the theme is Will It Snow? And we're having a clothing drive. Uh, weather appropriate clothing, uh, you can donate them here. We don't have a release scheduled for that, but you know, bring clothes in because we're going to give it to the Domestic Violence Project. 
Um, weather appropriate, obviously don't bring your shorts in, bring, you know, bring coats, bring hats, gloves, etc. We're still looking for features for that one as well, uh, and sword fighters. Um, and that's it for the announcements. Um, we're going to start the recorded... Do you have something to say? Uh, vote for the air call before you guys go. Yes, vote for, the, vote for the air call. Um, you can talk to Mike about more of the, uh, the details associated with that. Um, I'm going to go grab the list. I know Daria is number one on the list, so please welcome Daria. rape culture, a branch of the patriarchy that makes our bodies into commodities to be assumed and consumed by those with the money to spend and the stroke to make things happen. Nudity on the big screen at age 19 in order to assure that you're still getting work at 24. A quick bit of dick with the producer on his casting couch. Maybe if you're good, he'll put in a good word, assure you a career well into your 30s provided you can keep yourself looking good and thin and willing to fuck the producers again and again. No was never a barrier for you. Yes was only a key to the gate for us. And once you were finished taking what you wanted, you only let us through the gate if you liked the way we fucked. We never had a position to negotiate from. It was suck my cock or never work in this town again. The system rigged by you and your dude bro conspirators vying for prime pussy real estate getting in on the ground floor. You stake your claim on women as if you, they were the new world and you were Christopher Columbus. Plant your flag on this pussy that was never yours to claim. You exploit and manipulate and conjole and destroy, and we call this concept rape culture. But you call it business as usual. The environment fostered by your self-declared entitlement to our bodies puts us on this casting couch within your feet and fingers' reach. Forced to place a price on our bodies and souls to appease your greasy, creeping fingers or go back home and wait tables at a diner where the, where the patrons all grab at your ass. Hollywood is just an exaggerated example of the same sexist system found in more subtle ways outside of it. Advancement comes to those with open legs for easy legs. This is not the price for work that anyone should be forced to pay. Yet this is the gate you place before us to earn a living wage. My body will never belong to you or any other man for I am not property. You will not be allowed to take me by force, tax-free, to raise a flag or plant a tree. I reject your claim as the natives rejected Columbus. I reject your gospel as a heretic rejects Jesus Christ. Keep your dick pics and your indecent, indecent proposals. I will forge my own way. I would rather fail on my own than be your successful little fuck toy. last one was written, um, we've uh, had, had some unfortunate uh, recent events concerning certain appointments made by our guy that lives in the White House now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, now we have a dude bro frat guy as a judge and we're kind of screwed and, and it kind of dug up some things. I was, um, this isn't actually related to that, but I was raped in 2001. And this is the first time I've ever actually used that word to describe mm. what happened to me. And I don't know why I shared that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, I am somewhat fortunate, I guess, as a trans woman that doesn't look like a trans woman, that I can kind of just put my headphones on and disappear in public. But that's not always going to be the case for me. And this is a poem about that realization. 
riding on a bus with the headphones on. I don't appear to be feminine, so people usually let, leave me alone. I've managed to go a very long time without being physically attacked. High school is the last time I remember anything like that. Still, the reality of being perceived as feminine in public comes with risks. Risks I can seemingly mitigate by appearing less feminine. But I wouldn't call this presentation masculine. It gives the power to a false idea that masculine presentation is, default, is a default setting. There's nothing inherently masculine about a hoodie and sweatpants. More women than men I know wear this stuff anyway. Men wear shorts or jeans or slacks. Women wear sweats and yoga pants, unless you're me, then hopefully you're just invisible. Because I know this won't last. The only reason I haven't been attacked since my tra transition began is because I'm not, not enough time has passed. This illusion of masculinity doesn't really protect me. It only exists as a deterrent, something I do for peace of mind. One of these days, I'm going to get attacked. It's not going to matter what I look like or how I dress. I can dress in a way that makes me feel less likely to be targeted, but I will be targeted. Whether it's by a man who wants to assert his power over a woman, or from a bigot who thinks he knows my gender better than I do, it could be a sex crime, a hate crime, maybe even both. I might survive the experience, or maybe I could die. Every time I step outside of my house, I'm at risk, even if all I'm doing is riding on the bus with headphones on. Mm -hmm. And the other person on the recorded open mic, please welcome Keith Allison. <laughs> Dogs are delicious. Don't judge what I eat. They're loaded with protein from their cute heads to their feet. Animals are intended for us to eat. If they weren't, then why are they made of meat? Don't get all sappy. They were humanely raised. They were loved and cared for before being broiled and braised. It's tradition. We've done it for hundreds of years. So leave me alone with your pathetic tears. Oops, did I say dogs? Cows. I meant, and somehow you no longer offer lament. Mm -hmm. Thank you. This is called Instant Nutrition Expert. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and the vegans know where this is going. Yeah. <laughs> it's a common known fact that when a Big Mac, Biggie Fry, milkshake eating motherfucker finds a vegan, they are suddenly awarded a degree in nutrition. <laughs> they shout protein like a Tourette syndrome tick, like they have any idea of the USDA recommended level. Like they ever gave it a single thought beyond an excuse to pop one more cheeseburger into their open mouth until they met me. Oblivious to the protein in every single vegetable on the planet and nut, seed, grain, and legume. Oblivious to the saturated fat and cholesterol in every single animal planet driving the leading cause of death in America. You need milk. Oblivious to the reality that minerals, such as calcium, literally come from the ground. You need meat to live. Oblivious to the fact that I'm alive. <laughs> then the last one I'm going to read to you, this is uh, written as in the style of a children's poem. And this was me actually doing a lot of research at the beginning. There's a pretty normal path for a child who is taught to eat meat, as most of our children are, before we have any clue what we're eating. We're eating bacon before we have any clue it's a pig being cut up and served towards a burger before we know it's a cow. And there's, there are youth or Yahoo pages and things and uh, chat group pages saying, what do I do? My kid's freaking out. What can I tell them to keep them eating meat? And so this is a response to the things we say to get children to go against their genuine compassion when they don't want to eat animals and start not wanting to eat them. It's called Farm Fresh Fairy Tales. No, no, sweetie, don't you cry. That little piggy wanted to die. Bacon is so good and yummy. Don't you want more in your tummy? Eating meat makes you strong and big. Don't cry over a dirty pig. She gives us milk, that sweet old cow. Her baby doesn't need it now. Her udders are so big and full. She's thankful when we start to pull. Old McDonald's farm has only happy cows. They smile and laugh all day, singing to the sows. When the butcher comes, they hope it is their turn. Being on your plate, an honor for which they yearn. There was no pain, it didn't suffer. We needed it to be our supper. Chicken meat is so humane, especially with that tiny brain. 
eat a nugget, get a toy, a happy meal for a girl or boy. Beef, it's what's for dinner. We need protein, you know. And make sure you've got milk. It helps the body grow. Eating lots of meat, the only way to grow. E-I-E-I, -E -I, oh no, that simply isn't so. Eggplant, beans, and broccoli, lentils, flaxseed too, apricots and strawberries, they are so good for you. Everything you need grows up from the ground. Fruits and veggies, big and long, or even small and round. Pigs are social creatures, loving of their young. They like to play and use the mud to protect them from the sun. With an oink oink here and an oink oink there, the boiling vats of water will help remove their hair. Chickens are inquisitive and very, very bright, warming up their babies in their eggs at night. With a cluck cluck here and a cluck cluck there, a male inside a hatchery doesn't have a prayer. Cattle are so sweet and kind, a more peaceful creature is hard to find. With a moo moo here and a moo moo there, watch them bleed and thrash around while hanging in the air. There are no bits, just like me, that animal is a he or she. We don't need to eat them, that story isn't so. We can live and let live, E-I-E-I-O. Mm -hmm. Okay, will you mm -hmm. bye everyone on Facebook Live? Bye.